my boss's okay, boss's boss person. We're live uh, now. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. But yeah, my boss's 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 person uh, wanted us to try and do like a March Madness thing. Not everybody's a sports fan, but he, he threw it out there. So I went and filled out a bracket the other day before the thing. Nice. I'm a part of the work group and stuff, but yeah. If I uh, the closest one to get the most accurate bracket gets fifty bucks, I guess. So I was like, cool. Oh shit. Wait, I'll talk All right. Oh, that's where I live. Yeah. PT. All right. Well, cool. I'm going to do my quick welcomes on this. Is the After Bark live stream, everybody. Bark, 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 bark. Ooh, bark, 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 bark. Welcome on in, of course. The Ruby. Put Ruby in. Uh, Ruby ah, will be Ruby. joining us shortly. Uh, she will make it. I think I think she told me yesterday she had to go out. She had plans to go out with like and have margaritas with her mom. And she didn't know she was going to be right back in time for this. So she should be coming back. She may be a little tipsy even. Who knows? Ooh. Uh, but yeah, thanks for McMean. Welcome on in. We got a few of Firefox. We got Mala the Skunk. We've got Audible Player, Series Striker. Welcome on in, Kai. Plus, she speaks. Gray Old Fox. Uh, Gamigan. I forget how to say your name. Fuck, I'm tired. Pip the <laughs> Badger. Resi Saber. Uh, I don't remember if I said a Running Bear. We got Haley Huss as well. I think I uh, take a tear. I think we got everybody so far. But yes, welcome on in, everybody. This is the After Bark live stream where we kind of just shoot the shit. And it's an unedited version of the podcast where we talk to you directly. Uh, oh, welcome on in, sauces. Uh, uh, you just said that episode was great. Well, thank you. We yeah. try. We kind of just went at that one, and it, Bit of a... <laughs> you know, it, it was more cohesive than I thought it was. Yeah. Because in the moment, I was like, God damn, we kind of bounce around and never really tighten everything up. But nah, it's all right. We bounced around at first. And then I was like, OK, I'm going to make a list of all of our topics. And mm -hmm. then we kind of stayed on it. I'll give Ruby credit. She like did actually a good mm -hmm. amount of not getting derailed. Yeah. Um... Uh, sorry about to hear your cat. So I didn't know if I wanted to talk about that right out the gate. I think I should because I'd rather get this kind of part done with. And then we can maybe like turn it towards something a little bit more positive or just like again shoot the shit um yeah starting with though um i i was just telling misha this and it really sucks is uh my cat whitney of uh we got her in, about in july of 2009 so she wasn't quite 15 she um uh she got like sunday was great i actually had some videos and photos of something that never happened before she called up with me and ash well, actually, she called up with me, and Ash snuck in between me and her. And Ash, my younger cat, groomed her, like gave her a little, little couple, like well, more than a couple legs. Like was actually like slightly bathing her, like cats do. Mm -hmm. And that hasn't happened in like the five plus years I've had Ash. Uh, so they've always been like bad roommates. So it was like, holy shit, I can't believe this is happening. Now I'm like in my head wondering, it was like, is this a precursor? Did I not? Did she know something I didn't? Or or I don't know, but she was fine Sunday. She was fine Monday. Um, Tuesday night in the later parts of the night, something happened. Um, and she started getting weird. And Ash started becoming really like, not like, a, like she's never been aggressive, aggressive, but she was very hissy and pissy with Whitney. And I was like, what the fuck's going on? And then I got woke up at 4 a.m. because Whitney was like being kind of weird and just like laying in my little connector room between my bedroom and my bathroom mm -hmm. and like ash was like fronted up like in between them like getting all pissy i'm like what the fuck and i don't know i got mad at ash i'm like get the fuck out of here i whitney's whitney's my home girl she's always like she's my baby uh so i always defend her i always take her side no matter what and uh so i pulled her in the bed and this is where things got weird is whitney will lay with me if I'm petting her and kind of giving her attention, but she knows when I take my glasses off and turn the lights out that I'm going to bed, she'll stick around for maybe 10, 15 more minutes. And then she would leave because yeah. she wants to go do her own thing. Um, Ash will sleep with me all night. Even if I like roll over, turn around, Ash will just be there. So Whitney staying that night was like setting off some flags. I'm like, what's going on? Well, then I, I had to work on Wednesday. And I kept an eye on her. She was really congested. I got a like warm rag and had to clean out her nose because they had all crusties and shit. Like, okay, you're feeling sick. Like, you're clearly sick. And I don't remember this time ever, get this, this cat ever getting sick. Ever. So, I thought she was being pitiful because she's sick. And when you've never been sick, what do you think a cold feels like? It probably feels like you're dying. 
Yeah. Um, very unfortunately, though, whatever was afflicting her um, was serious enough. We didn't know it was enough to take her to an emergency vet. We had planned. I'd, I'd already called my mom that night and said, hey, uh, that would be actually I had been on the phone and I started that recording late because uh, a I clocked out of work and then B I called my mom and then was like, hey, I don't like this. Can we like I don't have a whole lot of money like. I need to take her to the vet though. Like we, I, I just want to be safe. Um, so that was the, that was the course of action. As soon as I got out of this recording on Wednesday, I ran up to the store and got some litter and some stuff so I could separate Whitney into the bathroom so I could provide a more warmer and contained environment to like, hopefully like make her feel better. Uh, Cause she was feeling cold too. It was kind of weird. Like she's a fuzzy animal. Why is she cold? You know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, I stayed up till after midnight, a little bit after midnight, uh, Wednesday night. And very unfortunately, when I got up around, oh, it was a little bit before 7 a.m., somewhere around 6.30, I think, I went to the bathroom and she had passed away. And that sucked. Yeah. Um. I'm sorry, I... (sighs) <sighs> it sucks. It's hard to talk about. It, it's I, honestly, I, I was really worried about that work day because I was like, dude, I'm not like I have to yeah. make phone calls. Like part of my job is calling places and some other things. And I was like, man, if I like what happens, if I fucking break down on a phone call. And uh, my thought first thought was and I hate this. Like. It wasn't my first thought. I mean, there was a lot of crying and yeah. I called my mom immediately and was like, I need you here because she's gone. Yeah. And she's like, no. And I was like, yeah, I need you. So she came in and she uh, she had a pretty rough reaction, too. I mean, she helped. Uh, the story is, like, I, I've had Whitney since she was literally like a newborn. Mm-hmm. Uh, I came home from work in 2009. Uh, I was only working. Mom doesn't work. She's a preschool a teacher's assistant and stuff like that. My sister didn't work. She's just a sc- school student. She never worked. Uh, summers dad takes a vacation around his birthday the first week of july and they do a lot of house chores in that week because it's like i'm gonna take a vacation but then he also does a bunch of shit around the house when he can uh and they were cleaning up a brush pile and they found four kittens no mama was around so they grabbed like a small tupperware container and threw like a nice little like couple fluffy towels in it and like put the four kittens in it and then stuck it back out kind of where that brush pile was hoping mom would come pick them back up well, about 9.30 that night, um, thunderstorms rolled in. And, well, A, we didn't want to leave them out there in a thunderstorm. B, like, in the container, they're just going to die. Like, they'll, they'll yeah, it'd be awful. They're just literally going to drown. Yeah. So, at that point, we're like, all right, we're going to pull them in. We'll just foster them. When I say babies, chat, newborns, they didn't have eyes open yet. Oh, jeez. So, I've had her from... At most, she was maybe two weeks old or less. Um, I actually didn't attach immediately because we were told we were going to foster them and get like then and then like give them out to homes after. But after a few weeks, we named them and then we ended up keeping them. And I named Whitney. Nah, and Whitney was my girl. Whitney was going to be my baby. See, um, yeah, that's the <laughs> the big mistake was naming them because that oh, yeah, is the first step to getting attached. It's like slightly slightly racist why i named her uh because when she was a baby she was pure white and i was just like oh this is this cast just why i just called her whitey for like the first week <laughs> <laughs> so dumb oh this is it was really that dumb uh and then we found out she was a girl and then she needed a real name so then i just said well whitney's a cute name plus my mom really loved whitney's whitney houston music so it's oh, like fucking yeah. cool. Whitney Houston and Whitney's a cute name. That's Whitney. That's my girl. Um, so and then I mean, like I said, so this is 09. This is the summer before I graduated high school. So I've had her since. Um and she's moved with me to college. She moved back home, moved to this place, knew this. She's been, you know, through like some of the most formative and also like roughest times of my life. And that cat has just dealt with it the whole way. And uh, yeah, so 
mom showed up and I knew for a fact, I said, uh, just depending on, I, I didn't know how I felt yet. And cause I, I don't really want to call in the work. Uh, it's my fucking second, not, not quite through my second week at this new job. And I already had to ask for another early day because of a fucking appointment. My, uh, that I was dealing with, oh, and boy. Yeah. so I was like, I don't want to. I want to try and go to work today. And then my head, though, was like, I'm not letting her sit to be buried until after six o'clock. So I said, Mom, I need to. T- I need to come back to your place and bury her now. And so she she w- agreed. So we got go got back to the parents' place. And somewhere where my childhood cat is buried, his name was Twister. He died when he was 16, uh, a year after we had actually gotten the kittens. Um, it was just before I moved down to uh, another place for uh, college. Um, he passed away because he was old, 16, you know. Yeah. Um, out by about where he's buried, somewhere in the vicinity, I went and dug a hole with my dad and buried her. And it is kind of poetic. Because uh, it's not even 100 feet from where we found her as a baby. Oh, wow, yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's almost like returning from where she came. Ah, I hate it! I'm sorry, man. I wish I had more to say. You know, it's no, no, yeah, I know. it's no. Got to get better at talking about it, anyways. I know it's only been like not even two days, but um, there was a moment, and you know, um, we talked about it on the podcast, and me and you, like specifically, like um, talked about my favorite moment being like the snow and like a serene moment. Yeah, and like somehow. It's been so warm since February. Um, it was cold enough that yesterday morning, as I'm like waiting for my dad to get some shoes on and like come out to help me go bury her, I'm just sitting there like holding her and standing, um, standing outside, and it was flurrying. Jeez, yeah. And it's... I was like, man. <laughs> It's like the world knows, man. Yeah, I don't it's... believe in I don't believe in that shit. But it's like, how? Like, how does this like? Yeah, like I'm not, I'm not really, like... not really a believer in that either. Mm-hmm. But sometimes things happen in a certain way, and it's like, yeah. huh? It's so um... like realistic. Like to me, that's my moment. That's my last moment with her. Yeah. And honestly, I got I got back home now. My fucking lower back has been killing me since yesterday. Digging holes. If you don't dig holes oh ever, God. holy shit, you use muscles you're not fucking used to. And if all of y'all know, if you're going to go fucking dig a hole to bury anything that's, you know, a pet or an animal or something, you have to dig it decently deep enough that it doesn't get dug up. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, it's just the nature of life. If, if, yeah. It's not buried far enough. You make it too easy. Something will probably try and go get it. Yeah. So dug a pretty deep hole. Not the four feet standard, but closer to two and a half feet, I think. Um, quite you know, quite big enough for her to fit in it, though. Um, she had a blanket. I think when she moved down to my college, when I started going to my second community college, I I remember we acquired a a blanket at some point in time. And it was always just labeled hers. And I've had it with her ever since it's moved with me. Um, and it was just, I guess her blanket and I had actually put it in the bathroom with her that night. So mm-hmm. I ended up burying her with that. That's that's but, good. Um, I thought about like, do we keep this like as a keepsake, as like a memento? But I was like, nah. I feel like it's hers. So. Yeah, like for me, it went with her. Does it like in the grand scheme? Does she know? No. Um, 
but it is it is you know to me i it felt special to me it felt like the right thing to do so i did yeah yeah um and then work actually i got home i didn't eat um i mean i couldn't eat at that time i was just like they I, yeah i don't even blame you i was tired i slammed an energy shot and like started to push myself through the work and by the way i am reading chat and i i thank you all for that um Work actually really helped both yesterday and today. Um, I just focus, focus, do the work, focus, do the work. The worst parts are the 15 minute break to hour lunch where I keep either remembering what happened, you know, finding your Thursday morning or uh, the little things that's not around anymore because of her. Yeah. That's... Um, and I just wanted to say like one last little thing. I mean, I've been talking for like 15 minutes, but. Uh, the thing that's getting me right now is uh, two things. Um, a couple of years ago, I guess my uh, her her siblings, my my sister and my other parents' cats, they uh they all started just stopping like pissing in the litter box for some reason. Shrug, mm-hmm. and they piss right in front of the litter box. So I've been buying puppy pads and I put them down. And I change about every morning. Sometimes I get it lucky and I can wait an extra day. Um, and obviously when it first started happening, she was just pissing. So I'd have to clean up cat piss every morning. I'm like, God damn it. Or I'm not going to lie. Stepped in it a couple of times. Like, God damn it. What oh, the fuck? Yeah. You know, really annoying and stuff. And then like literally today or yeah, today, you know, I go to go check the pee pad and there's no pee pad because we, I don't need yeah, one anymore. That's... And it's just like, damn, I wish I had that problem now. Mm hmm. And it's the same thing with earlier. Um, she's always a weird cat. Cats are always weird. They always have weird little quirks they do. They and really um, do. it helps make them unique, right? And, for, and she's been doing this forever, like since I, I could know, like really young. For some reason, she, um, she, she'd pick up the wet or the, the, the dry kibble, like the cat food. And she doesn't do it with every piece, but she'll throw it in the water bowl, let it soak <laughs> for a little bit, and then eat it. That's so gross. Like, when she gets older, obviously, I could tell, like, oh, maybe she yeah. wants more wet food. But she did this. She's, you know, she's been doing this forever. It was like a thing. So every day, uh, damn near, I have to replace the water because uh, it gets gross. Yeah. They're, like, drinking water and a meal if I don't because there's so much, like, cat, like, dissolved cat food in it you know yeah yeah um and that was another thing that kind of hit me uh today it was just like i went to go check the water and like you know to add water to it and i was like wow it's cl-. i was like wow it's clean and i go oh right you know yeah. i was like shit of course it is that's not something ash does that was that was a whitney thing yeah so yeah um that really sucks i've been dreading that day for uh many 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 well many 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 years it's actually why i even ended up with ash i had uh about five or six years ago i had like it i was it wasn't a nightmare it was like you know you're laying in bed and then you have like an existential crisis the ex- existential crisis was realizing that one day whitney was gonna leave me and then i had the thought of coming to a home that didn't have a cat, like an empty house. Yeah, that's and that shook me to a fucking core because I've never not lived somewhere where I've had an animal. Yeah, and it shook me to the core. So I started looking to adopt. I went through an adoption agency to try and adopt a certain cat, but they got mad because I hadn't taken Whitney to a vet in like a year. So sometimes adopting pets is harder than adopting a child. Chat, it's fucking weird. Did they wait? They did you tell them about Whitney or like? How did they yeah. do that? You ha- oh, because they they require you to list other animals you have, and they want to make sure you're going to provide. Because oh. I will say, this adoption agencies, even though there's an overpopulation of cats, will still try and make sure these cats go to like a good home that takes their cats more regularly than I was to that that that. I mean, I I raised Whitney, and and gave her the best, and they don't fucking know anything, so they yeah. they denied me off of a basic principle that they had, but and they're they're allowed to do that, but I think they. Well, it's like they denied that cat a very nice home. But on the same note, 
uh, the night I had gotten a, the the uh, rejection letter or the email, uh, I went and was working at Walmart overnights, and I left uh, I left my house pissed, and I was fuming for nine hours because we had an hour unpaid lunch. And at seven in the morning, when I'm clocking out, I'm still pissed off. And I used to have a neighbor lady that would sit on her porch and drink coffee, and she was a big cat lover too. Mm-hmm. And I, throughout the couple of weeks of trying to do this adoption process, I told her about this whole cat thing. And, uh, uh, she, you know, I, I come in, I go to come inside and, uh, my sister hadn't left it either. Cause my sister worked with me at Walmart too at the time. So we carpooled, she, her car was here and, uh, I go, as I'm like walking up the steps, my sister hasn't quite left. I go, Hey, um, they denied me on the cat. And she goes, Oh really? Well, that's fucking stupid. She goes, well, you want to, you like, are you looking to like just adopt any cat? And I go, I don't know. I'm kind of spent right now on like this whole process. And she goes, well, we, uh, there's a cat that just showed up a couple weeks ago up at the neighbor's house. The, the neighbor being there's like, they have like a long ass driveway, maybe, I don't know, maybe a quarter mile long uh, at the end of our road. Uh, they go, this cat showed up. It's been posted on missing pets page on the Facebook for the town. They, uh, The people that live up there took her into the local vet and checked for a chip, no chip. Uh, so she's just been out there. Super, I guess, people friendly. And I said, well, you know what? We'll, we'll call this that moment of like, uh, we'll call this this moment of like, I don't know, fate, happenstance, whatever, coincidence, maybe. They'd give her a call if she's up and can get round her up and bring her down here today. I'll I'll see her and if I think she's adoptable, if I can bring her into the house, fuck it, I'll do it. Surprisingly enough, the lady's up. Not only does she just round her up, but she picks her up in her arms and walks her all the way down here. Um immediately puts me puts ash you know the cat i've had for five years now into my arms and she she could tell she was weary but she wasn't aggressive and she was just like okay you're holding me and at that moment i decided like fuck it i'm gonna do all the tests right now and see if i get i can get myself hurt i flipped her on her back and carried her held her like a baby some cats won't even let you do that and they're like domesticated nope she was fine with it Touched all of her paws and gave him a little squeeze too. Fine. Oh, kind of like mess with her mouth a little bit to see if she would uh, like be like f- aggressive around the mouth. Nope. Very light tugs to the ear. I wasn't going to be aggressive. Nope. Yeah, yeah. Didn't care. Touched her tail, held her tail. Nothing. And I was like, God damn, this is not a stray cat. This cat is amazing. All right, Steam Pony, have a good one. I'm sorry. It's going to get better. This is actually kind of a nice story, but. Yeah, uh, we're going to talk about nicer things here in a second. But yeah, um, and and she like and she's got you know, at the time her eyes change. Ash's eyes change from like a, a pissy yellow to like an emerald green that are just gorgeous. So uh, she had these gorgeous green eyes. I'm like, who fucking What's dumped this cat? Piss yellow like, was the descriptor you went with. <laughs> it is. It, it is piss yellow. It's like a very <laughs> like th- they don't look good. And it's like, why? Why do your eyes change like that sometimes? <laughs> And uh, I, yeah, so I got denied the adoption. I pulled Ash in, uh, Whitney, Whitney. And that's another thing. Like when I was living with my cousin down for my second year of college down in uh, the other community college, he actually brought in two dogs into the house, one first and a few months later, our second. And um, Whitney doesn't like dogs, but she tolerated them. I think she helped teach them a lot of lessons. And at some point, because I, I literally had a child gate in my doorway to my bedroom, and Whitney could just run up and jump over it, but the dogs were taught not to do it, and they wouldn't. She'd just come run in, jump over it, run around the living room, get the dogs to chase her, and then she'd run and jump back over and like watch them. That's and they'd so do that. And it's like they, she, she was playing a game with them, straight up. So, nah, she, she, she went through a lot, and she was the most amazing cat I've ever had and probably will ever have. I mean, I, I love Ash. Ash is great, but she also is a bitch. 
Uh, she's been weird. Like again, she, I, I don't know if it was something she knew that Whitney was sick. She didn't understand why Whitney was making like the noises she was making or whatnot, but she got real fucking weird and pissy with Whitney, uh, that last like day and a half. And I don't blame her. I'm not like upset at her at all, but she's, she's got this attitude. And then because I didn't know how to go about it, I didn't exactly show Ash Whitney's fucking dead. Yeah, that's. I was like, I don't know what this is going to do for her anyways. So, and I wasn't thinking about too much else other than, oh, fuck, now I need to go bury this cat before work. Yeah. So, well, I got to go bury my baby. Like, fuck. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, I just walked out. And I think all yesterday, it, it's funny, because, again, they were like bad roommates. Uh, oh. Have a good one, Fia Firefox. Sorry, yeah, bye, Fia. I'm more depressing. Oh, you're, no, <laughs> you're allowed to talk about this. But uh, all yesterday, I don't think she was looking for her because she was like, "Where's you know where's she at? Like I miss her or something." I think she was still like kind of in that mood of like, "Okay, the last time I saw her was in the bathroom." So she was being fucking weird anytime I came in the bathroom, like. I'd come out of the bathroom and she'd start growling and getting all upset. And I'd be like, what the fuck's your problem? You know? Uh, oh, well, I just, and then I did, I did what you're supposed to do. You just ignore bad behavior. Um, but yeah, she was real fucking weird mostly yesterday, but, um, towards the, uh, later part of the day yesterday, she has been, she kind of chilled the fuck out and, uh, Cats are very routine like, and again, I, I honestly don't think Whitney factored too much in her routine. Um, there's not a part of me that doesn't think she doesn't miss her or anything. And I think she will end up being slightly uh, like, at least miss the fact that she used to annoy the cat, annoy her and antagonize her for fun. Because I know Ash would do that. Ash would straight up Whitney to be like laying on the ground. Ash would like go up to her, bring up a paw like she was gonna smack her. And then, you know, Whitney's just laying there, like, growling and being all hissy and sputtery, but <laughs> not fucking do anything. Yeah. And then Ash, instead of hitting her, will, like, turn around and, like, put her butt closer and closer to her as, like, trying to get Whitney to, like, attack her and chase her. So it's like, I know she wasn't, like, trying to fight fighters. She was literally, I think, trying to goad Whitney into, like, a little play fight. But Whitney was old, you know? She's an old girl. She didn't want to do that. So. I don't know. I th I think she might end up missing some of that, and she might be a little weird about it for a little bit. But yeah, I mean, uh, and that's the thing I think is going to kill me for a while is like, again, just kind of like having too much downtime. I can't. I don't want myself to be able to think. I'm bad about it. I overthink. Thinking happens. Uh, yeah, I I have the exact same problem. Got to get through that, and then um. Good news is, like, yeah, I uh, worked yesterday, spent time with Ruby after that. Some of you were there at the uh, uh, on Ruby's stream on Twitch and heard a little bit about it. Um, I didn't stream. I just didn't have the energy to do it on my own. Talking yeah, to Ruby no, in her chat's <laughs> one thing. Um, played for, like, three hours, and I went and laid down. And then I uh, actually got fucking high, too, um, which was, like, a catch-22. It was good, but it wasn't. Um, but then uh, today, today was get up. Obviously, I'm still like beat and then my back hurt more because it was a day later. Um, I ran up, grabbed some energy. I just needed an energy drink of some sort. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I got to work and I've just been working and then it's work. Live uh, premiere, eight dinner while in the premiere. All right, we're doing the after bark here. We're at the after bark after this, which I already took a sleep aid. I gotta go basically to bed because I gotta fucking go up in the gas station tomorrow morning. That's and true. I work my double tomorrow because I deliver tomorrow as well. So it's like boom, 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 boom. I'm not I don't have time to think. I'm just gonna work and go. So it's kind of a good thing. I'm not really allowed to think <laughs> for the next few few days. But Yeah, there there is a balance in that though. <laughs> true. No, you're right. I but the thing is I do this normally, so it's like Yeah, you're not you're not doing anything different. It's not that I'm adding more work because I don't want to think, and that's detrimental, you know? Yeah. It's just, this is just how my life is set up currently. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Um, it sucks, guys. Uh, I really appreciate your good words. And like you said, emptiness syndrome, empty house syndrome, and all that stuff's really bad. A uh, part of me is already like, do I get another cat? But I'm like, I don't want to do that right now. I would, yeah, I'd give it a minute. Nah. So, yeah, I'm going to sit on that. Well, technically, with the new job, I might be able to get like a dog as long as it's not a very, very yappy dog. Because I do just work from home. I'd have to wait till I quit the gas station because I can't be doing that double where I don't get enough time to like really take a dog out. Yeah. But I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. it might, that might be like another thing later on. I'd also need to bring some puppies or dogs into this house and like see how Ash reacts because I, this is Ash's house now and I'm not going to bring any animal. Just like when I brought Ash into this house, if Whitney would have had an incredibly negative reaction and things had not gone better, uh, I probably would have had to get rid of Ash. When I say probably, I most likely would have. Yeah. Um, because I like it's just it's a priority thing. Is like Ash is my cat. Ash is my baby. She loves me to death. Um. So if I'm gonna bring anything into this house, it has to be if Ash can accept it. If not, it's just not. Sorry, I can't do it. Yeah. Um. But no, it is gonna be a rough period. It is gonna take some time. You're right. I'm gonna make sure. I'm not going to do anything reaction reactionary. Oh, we said, oh, good yawn. I need to be able to sleep tonight anyways. I need to be tired. I will say, a little emotionally drained. Still hurts. Uh, it's been a bad couple of years. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, I'm The only so thing sorry. is, is this year's like, got the potential to be a fucking great year, and then that happens, and I'm like, oh, cool. It doesn't matter what happens this year now, because like, I, that's just going to, Trump about anything. Yeah. It's losing one of your fucking children, man. That's my baby. Yeah, it's not easy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, other than that, though, uh, we'll twist this around a little bit. Uh, work's going really well. That's good. Um, I thought, especially yesterday, like yesterday, it took me a little bit to get going. Um, I mentioned to a couple of my supervisors, like, hey, so this kind of happened this morning. I'm here to work, though. And they were all incredibly supportive. They're like, hey, if you need some extra break time or if you need to go, you know, just let us know what you need and we'll work with you. And I'm just like, God damn, I like this place. I really fucking like this place. They have been all but helpful, accepting and supportive in all facets, be it work related and personal related right now. Oh, I caused you to yawn. <laughs> and I've really enjoyed this job. It's my completion of my second week. I thought I was moving slow yesterday, but I did knock some stuff out. And I got uh today was kind of weird. Um but there was almost no instruction today. Today was a lot of just go ahead and here's here's your orders and do your shit. Uh, I asked some questions. I already had some curveball fucking orders, and that's what slowed me down a lot today, too. It was like, this shit's um, not right. It's not fitting into anything that I've been taught, and I've tried my best. Here's this. What do you guys think I should do? And then they would come back with some advice, or they'd be like, okay, yeah, this is kind of fucky. Like, they can't, you know, until they do the order themselves, they can't tell, you know? So, uh... It, it was kind of a slower day at the like a uh, couple hours ago, right before my my direct boss, uh, my team lead left. Uh, I said, all right, well, I was going on my last break. I said, I'm down to just a couple orders and they're automated orders. So it'll take me like not even 10 minutes to do them. And so I was like, if you know, I still got like an hour and like 30, 40 minutes left, you know, sign me some more. So she tossed me some more orders and goes. Uh, oh, she said, thank you, or uh, thank you, or something like that. And then the other thing is, like, you're killing it. And I was like, seeing that, I was like, that's that's a good sign. Because, like, I feel like I'm not up to par. But the feedback I've been giving was, hey, you're catching on to this quickly, and you've been killing it. So, like, that's good. Yeah, no, that's really good. Um, Oh, I'm going to turn the music on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now so it works been really well. And then that's the thing. I actually had a friend message me, you know, like, how are you doing? And it's like, 
they he, he's a sweetheart and he, he usually does like a weekly check-in with me just you know, just to say something yeah and i was one of those <laughs> things where i was like well I'm mostly good everything's mostly good i have to say that it sucked real bad yesterday <laughs> and on this one very very particular aspect it sucks a lot but <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> it's like doing, one of those things man? like oh earlier <laughs> literally everything else is going just fine <laughs> yeah fuck jeez yeah well it's nice that you have a friend that checks in on you like that oh yeah well if y'all know him he's blake he's the my my speed running protogen friend oh yeah you guys speed run that one game together the game that we're going to yeah 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 he usually usually it's a monday thing and i don't know he kind of hit me up today and i was like yeah yeah. I'm doing good, but if you didn't see, this kind of happened yesterday. Yeah. Other than that, though, yeah, everything's going pretty good. And I'm glad to have y'all uh, very, you know, like my close friends like Blake, you, Ruby, uh, who have been incredibly, like, supportive. Um, and then I, everybody who's, like, been paying attention to my Blue Sky, people that are here and all your kind words, I really do appreciate the support. Um, I know, and just like Misha, you've said, like, I'm sorry. It's one of those things, like, there's literally nothing nobody can do. Yeah. And not even myself, as much as it is. It's just, I need to take care of myself, and I need to process. That's what I got to do. Yeah. Um, and unfortunately, all that's time-based and... I think for the most part, I'm going to be able like yesterday, it was a lot harder to talk about this stuff. Um, I was m much less choked up today. Um, I'll be able to talk about it a little bit more like openly without being choked up or messed up, I think sooner. But when it comes to like reminders and shit, I think it's going to be months. You know, it's been 14 oh. plus years, you know? Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of routine built yeah. in together. <laughs> well, it's like you were saying, you know, everybody grieves on a different timeline, and that, you know, that timeline is not linear. Like, nope. some days are easier, and then some days it's just the end of the world, you know? Yeah. So, just gotta give yourself that time and space. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. But yeah, so what's going on with I, Misha? <laughs> anyway, I passed my capstone. <laughs> um, yeah, that 20... Or it was like, I think it ended up being like 22 23 page essay God damn. i got 95 out of 100 on it so i officially that was other than the one gen ed class i have in my senior recital that was the thing uh that i needed that was the big thing i needed to do to graduate so spring yeah. quarter 2024 i'm getting out what? of there oh I, I i see i just saw this i'm gonna rip it back around dude gavin said something really touchful like oh man losing a cat after only being a four-year-old cat that's really sad and i'm sorry that's yeah. really tough and then also plus she's saying they lost her cat in 2022 18 year old yeah which is actually unheard of to think of uh most cats don't make you know mid-teens yeah um, you, <laughs> it's crazy how like some cats just live very long yeah and it's like how are how are you doing that <laughs> Yeah, how are you so? Thought you bitches dad at fifteen. Why are you twenty two? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say you're old enough to drink. What the fuck? Do you want a shot? Like, I saw this video on TikTok. I think it's related to my last couple of posts because I didn't do videos. I just did like I did a text post on the day she passed. Yeah, I just didn't have much in it. Those actually tore me up because I, I submitted a photo with her, uh, on my TikTok of just her with like basically the memorial. Uh, a little message and then like hurt the dates roughly because uh, it was somewhere in, it was like that first week of July of 09 to that and I went and like Google or I, I did like the search feature for like sad music and the sad, the music I put on it like I can't I can't right now if I go to that TikTok right now and I click on that I will cry I will yeah, like lose don't. it because yeah. it's that music plus like it's a, like a memorial of my baby like holy yeah. shit it's immediate yeah, that's <laughs> like your oldest guy is eighteen in a couple weeks. All right, gray old fox, just keep giving them the best life you can. Keep enjoying every fucking moment you can. I think mean, they they could be around for two, four more years. Who knows? Yeah, it's 
Yep, but it's it's one of those things, and that's what I knew. I'd say in the last couple of years because she's she's bigger and she's older and yeah. Also, that's... those cats, all of our cats were inbred. Um, there's a bad stray cat problem for a long time out in my parents' area because oh. it's all like farmland and like out in the middle of nowhere, and all these cats basically roam. There'd be up to like twenty of them running around and more, and a lot of them were siblings. And the way I know this, and the way we know this, and there's actually some cats in this town here. We have tailless cats. Oh, interesting. Is that is that a it, is that a sign of inbreeding? Um, it's a deformity that we believe uh, has caused been caused by the inbreeding. Oh, okay. Um, because cats are born with tails for a reason. Like, yeah. So, um, it's weird that these cats, so, out of the four cats that we pulled off the streets, uh, when I say the streets, I know my parents' backyard, uh, one of them, there was three girls and one boy. The boy actually, like, uh, very unfortunately passed about a month or two into fostering, or like, like, raising him. He developed an upper respiratory, uh, infection, uh, and within, like, a night passed away. We found him in the morning, and he was gone. So that was very quick. And that was the one my sister initially chose. And so she was incredibly heartbroken. Um, so he, the, the, the only male of the group passed away early. He had literally no tail. Zero tail. Not a vertebrae. We have what was the runt of the litter. Who we have affectionately named Runt. <laughs> uh, she has about one to two vertebrae of tail. And the only reason why we know that is it's like this little nub that you can't see. But with a cat's butt you know their back and their butt the hair kind of comes off at an angle yeah and if you get her happy and stuff she'll try and wag her tail so all you'll see is the little hairs like kind of flutter back there it's like a very like it's interesting yeah um very interesting and uh oh he's your little buddy that sleeps with you that's yeah. the whitney again whitney for a long time would sleep with me a lot but then I'd say God five plus or seven years ago. I don't know. She got to a point where she, I move around a lot in my sleep and she just got tired of that shit. <laughs> if I sleep on a couch, Whitney will come sleep with me because when I'm constrained to a couch, I don't can't. move. Yeah. So she, she would sleep with me on the couch. Um, But when it came to like, again, like a bed, Ash though, I'd go to sleep and she's like sleeping on my chest. I'll wake up on my side and she's curled up against my back. Ash just moves with me. She just wants to be there. So Ash is like my little cuddle buddy. Um, shit, what else am I talking about before that? Oh, uh, um, my sister's Amber. cat named Prissy. She's super long haired compared to the others. Very fluffy. Has about two inches of tail. And then the tail kinks for another inch and a half to two inches. And that's it. It's like a kink in the tail. Huh. And, and it, it, the, 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 then the tail like juts in a different direction. Um, It's not like it's dead or falling off. It's just a deformity. Yeah. But because it kinks back towards itself, all of the fur has grown. And so her ass looks like it has a pom-pom on the end of it. <laughs> kind of cute. Yeah. Um... And then there was uh, then there was my cat, Whitney, where she had almost a full tail. But at the very end of her tail, you could think, I think she probably could have had a little longer tail had she not been inbred. Uh, the last vertebrae or so was kind of kinked a little bit. So I'm thinking there's a little deformity there on herself. But she was the most normal looking cat out of all of them because she had a fucking tail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so very weird. Very yeah. weird inbred. So my thought was like, it's. I mean, with when it comes to inbreeding, that usually shortens their lives too. The fact that she almost made fifteen, you know, I'm very oh, lucky true, to have yeah. had her this long. You know, very lucky to have her this long. She could have died when she was like eight. You know, depends on like a deformity, and and in inbreeding. So it's just something like I've cherished a lot of many years with her, and lucky to have her. Yeah. She was definitely a comfort piece through a lot of those tough days, you know, those tough times through college and, and shit. Yeah, I, I bet. 
Uh, but yeah, back to your capstone. Y'all, they're all saying congrats. Great on the 95. Oh, yeah. You're doing amazing things. Thank you. I, what else yeah. do you have to report on the school stuff? Uh, I'm still waiting on grades for the other because I mentioned in the episode there were three assignments. Still yeah. waiting on grades from the other two. I don't think I fucked up, but you know, there's always that thought in the back of your head that's like, what if you just like tanked those, dude? But like, I think it was like, as long as I get like 50% on both assignments, I'm good. Um, but <laughs> my brain is like, ah, oh, dude, you screwed up, man. Cause how school normally goes for me is I fuck up like week one or week two, and then it's just catch up for the rest of the quarter. And, like, I took a break during COVID, came back, and now I'm, like, ready to finish school, and I just didn't do that. So I'm still in the mindset of, like, everything hangs on this last score, even though I have a 94 in the class. And it's like, no, it really doesn't. And Kevin's like, you're fine. Like, it's gonna be fine. You're fine. And then Little next guy. quarter, uh, I gotta work on composition stuff over the break. Because next quarter I have to do a senior recital, and people have to be subject to my music. Um, I'm actually gonna make a like video, a post on a few we like, you know, maybe not. Well, probably Twitter, Twitter, Blue Sky, uh, Facebook for my close friends. Um, I did an orchestral arrangement of "Set Fire to the Rain," but getting an orchestra to do your senior recital is way too many people. So I'm going to have people submit recordings and ah, then nice. I'll mix it all into a big orchestra and boom. Um, yeah, the premise for that arrangement was like, what if set fire to the rain was in like a, di like what if it was a Disney villain singing it? So it's like oh. very, go very... hard on, go hard on the horns. Yeah. Well, kinda. For like one big portion, there is like heavy horns. Um, well, but there, yeah, it's very heavy punctuations and deep drums. Boom, 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 boom. I do probably need to do more with the percussion, honestly. Um, I might do a live stream where I like touch it up a little bit because it, it's 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 missing like a few things. Um, but yeah, and then the flute. I think I mentioned this. The flute. A uh, piece that I did. Um, I'm gonna perform at the big theater downtown later yes. this year. Yeah, uh, that's crazy. <laughs> I'm a little, a little nervous about that one. <laughs> I know it's nervousness, but like, know your piece, know your shit, and just go out there and do it. You know, that's just, yeah. just keep that, keep that focus. Put the blinders on. Don't let the distractions of everything else around you. Just, I am here. I'm gonna stand here, and there's. Uh, zone out and just be like all right i get, gotta play this flute yeah and it's just like because like it's a it's a weird piece um it's solo flute there's a lot of extended technique um you can sing while you play you can flutter tongue you can do all that fun stuff um and i played it for a recital not like well kind of a recital it's like every wednesday at noon the music building comes together to watch other, mm -hmm. you know, musicians perform. Um, and so I performed that because, like, you know, I'm a comp major and that is a composition I'm working on. And the uh, the chair of the uh, music department, like, came over to me afterwards and was like, that's, like, one of the best things we've heard come out of this place in a while. Like, you have to perform that downtown. And I was like, oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> and we talked about it. They were like, Is, are you going to be able to? And I was like, uh, yeah, like schedule wise, but nerves wise. Uh, <laughs> and they were like, don't worry about it. We'll have meetings. We'll talk about, you know, stage anxiety. We'll talk about all that. So they're going to give me tips and pointers to keeping <laughs> sane. Here, here's this. Out of van or whatever it's called <laughs> takes it oh my god i feel nothing <laughs> plays flute like a goddamn boss and then everybody's just like whoa and you're, whoa. you come back you're like i need more oh god right 
Well, the good news is now, now is, 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 and this is, I guess, something to just ask, and we get to learn more now because I actually don't know the answer. Um, is this so you're talking about performing on a live stage, clearly? Yes. Um, is that something you want to do as a composer? Or are you looking more to help make your own music to be not for you to perform on stage as much as you? uh fucking for musicals or for movies or for what have you um in terms of me playing my own music solo no <laughs> i'm never doing that again <laughs> oh no 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 definitely about i assume you'd be with a, a sort of group yeah well th this the piece that i'm playing is solo flute like not right. even piano it's just flute i meant so. i meant more with your compose your your composition degree oh though. yeah yeah um you do want to go play with like an, an say an orchestra or something i or are, were you uh, more looking to compose music for like i said like backtracking to music or to, to to movies and shit you know i i would like to go the music slash video game route um i'd also like to be in a brass band like dude a furry brass band would go so hard that's that's the shit we need <laughs> that's what that's the shit right there. That's that's the shit we are missing at cons, baby. And just in time for free musicians to get paid, right? Right? Yeah. We uh did I mention that at the end of the episode? I tuned it out towards the did I say the R Alliance shit? No, you we forgot to mention that in the episode. Yeah, so the cool thing touched up about the FWA shit is that R Alliance, you know, our good friend Finn the online furry music label literally just threw out a thing that says if, contact us if you're DJing or performing for uh, FWA. We're paying 100 bucks an hour minimum. Yeah, there. <laughs> this uh, this whole I think separate... most sets are like an hour long, so they're going to be tossing at least 100 bucks to a bunch of people. That's crazy. And it's fucking crazy that it's a music label that may not have any association with the people directly. They're just like, yeah. nah. We're going to do the right thing and pay these people for you fuckers. Yeah. Which, I mean, it is kind of a power play, though, because now everybody's like, oh, our alliance, eh? Yeah, wait. And, they're gonna, they're like, gonna that's that's a good people. way to fuck a network. Now suddenly, you know, once this actually happens, once people get paid and they get to go perform, they're going to be like, uh, yeah, our alliance, I'm going to go work with them. They're fucking great. Yeah. They came to me in my time of need. True. Uh, <sighs> ticket to your was like oh what were you gonna say oh no i was just gonna say <laughs> talking about anxiety stage anxiety just, you know shot of jack daniels before <laughs> oh fuck yeah 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 uh do you have a favorite piece of classical music i have a couple um what's classical that's is that actually a time period or can i just say like older non new uh, music classical is a time period um i think it is that's like but i can't what was it? I did like music theory for one course or something oh, like yeah. that. People was people usually theory? people usually just like gather classical as a whole, like orchestra, wind ensemble, all of that. Doesn't oh. super do like it's kinda like gay, where like gay is you know it represents LGBT as a whole to a certain extent. Yeah. But yeah, it's yeah, also yeah. its own thing. Yeah. So, like, if it comes to a piece that's, like... So, like, I mean, this is dumb. It's just piano, but, like, I love Moonlight Sonata. I've loved it ever since I heard it from, God forbid, Resident Evil. Yeah. <laughs> um, that wouldn't be considered classical, though, would it? I think so, yeah. Maybe? All right, Moonlight Sonata is definitely one of my favorite pieces. And then, I don't know, because I don't think it was created... It definitely, uh, it, it wasn't created for um, Cowboy Bebop, but the opening, uh, I think it's called Tank. Cowboy Bebop. I'm gonna go look it up now. Uh, what's yours while I look up that? Uh oh, I looked up Moonlight Sonata. Although this was still the classical period, the sonata is a romantic composition. So okay. well, it's romantic, and I thought it was great. It is good. Uh, because there was also a romantic period. There was Renaissance, classical, romantic. I'm not saying these in any order because I am horrible at music history. <laughs> Um, Never mind. I guess it was wrote for fucking Cowboy Bebop. It's so fucking good. It's very jazzy and definitely doesn't feel like it came from anime. Wait, what? Uh, what song did you say? Tank. Oh, I fucking love Tank, dude. The, the alto sax one solo is crazy. Oh, it's, oh, 
All of it's fucking you crazy. You know how hard it's, that it's, shit is to do? <laughs> I, I don't, but I can assume because it, it sounds crazy. And that's like, the, and that's the composition. All of it. All of it is just so well put together and it flows so well. And it was wrote for an anime. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah. It's so, oh, man. I love Tank. Um, but yeah, my favorite composed by Yoko Kano for the Japanese anime television series called Cowboy Bebop. Hell yeah, that's fucking amazing. That was like, uh, I did my capstone on sound alike tunes. Um, mm -hmm. and so I had to look up the song I Believe I Can Fly, I had to cite it to like what album was it from, and it was like. I know this was on Space Jam, but I don't think it was written for Space Jam. And then it was like its first, like the first album it came off, like came out on was the Space Jam album. And I was like, oh, fuck, I guess I guess it was written for Space Jam. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> it is amazing when you find stuff like that, right? Yeah. Uh, Baroque being one of the best periods of art history. I fucking hate playing Baroque music, though. <laughs> <laughs> that shit ass. It's I just... could, dude. I hate to say this, but it has been ten years since I took those college courses where I had to know about the Baroque period and shit. Oh, so. you're good. It's <laughs> I fucking don't remember. Cause I, one of Bach had like eighteen kids. There's so many Bachs that wrote music, but like one of or probably ah. a few of the Bachs, uh, they wrote, uh, they wrote Baroque, and I played. Uh, I think it was, God, what was it? Something A minor for solo flute. Um, and it's just notes, dude. <laughs> There's nothing to it. It's just a bunch of notes, you know, it, it's following a f musical form, doing a bunch of notes. And then it's, yeah, it's hard to, it's hard to put into words why I don't like it to each their own, but yeah. Um, All I can tell you is I'm Baroque. <laughs> I am also Baroque. Um. Anyway, my favorite classical piece... I'm just saying classical as all-encompassing when ensemble orchestra. Uh, Hunting Tower Ballad is my all-time favorite classical piece. That piece has made me cry a couple times. <laughs> um. It's weird because it's not, like, inherently sad. It's it's just dreadful in a really weird way. Um, it starts out very dreadful with like something very... about the United States Air Force Band. What? Yeah, they played it. That's my favorite recording of it, actually. Um, oh. Well, it... what? I'm putting it on. Oh, baby. Wait, this bitch is six minutes long. Yeah. Welcome to classical music. <laughs> um, And then the, the like middle part gets pretty intense it's like but but up but up but up but it gets you know it gets mm -hmm. going and then it ends up having like a happy period where everything everything feels fine and then it just hits you with the beginning like as loud as it can and you're just back to that dreadful port part and then oh my god the ending gives me like goosebumps it's so big and it's like i'm pretty sure it's just a minor chord but like it's so powerful how they do it. Um, I'll tell you what. What's up? Uh, let me find it because it came off a video game. Ever heard of the game called Lunar Two? I've heard the title. I don't know anything about it. Yeah, Learn Lunar Two Eternal Blue. It's better than I think. I think it was better than Final Fantasy Seven, but it never oh, got shit. the love that Final Fantasy Seven got from the PlayStation era. Damn. Um. It's got some, it was performed, all of the music was performed by a live orchestra, and that's why it's, like, impossible to, it's, like, really hard to go back and get, like, the, because it had, like, CDs included if you bought, like, the, it, well, so it's, it was called, like, a little Lunar 2, it was, like, a little 2, Lunar 2 Eternal Blue, but they had, like, a box set, and it came with a bunch of extra shit, and, uh, the, uh, the CD was, like, one of the big things that they were trying to like struggle to keep <sighs> and fuck it i'll just share it with you because i think you would take like i think you would enjoy it in general 
Uh, chat, fuck it, you can look in, you can look into it too. It's there. Um. But uh, this is one of my favorite games growing up. If you love RPGs, JRPGs, uh, go find an emulator with it. Um, it's incredibly long, but it's really fun. Uh, do you want me to send that directly to you, or are you just gonna snag it out of chat? Uh, you could send it directly to me. I don't want to open a YouTube link while I'm streaming because it'll auto. Dun, 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 dun. But let me. I can't remember. Oh, which song is the one I want though? Um, Dude, yeah, Galleon's theme is so good. <laughs> yeah, it's been it's been the case for a while, but like. Thank you for the link to Hunting Tower Ballad. Is that the link to Hunting Tower? You, I think you posted the link. Oh! To <laughs> <laughs> wait, how? I hit copy off of this. Maybe I didn't copy. Oh, wait. No, Lunar 2, Eternal Blue. I think we got pranked. Yeah, no. I got played. Damn. Um. But yeah, like, there's people that, like, scoff at uh, video game music. And they're like, oh, it's not real music. But, like, yes, the fuck it is. Like, for the past, like, 15, 20 years, it's been real music. That's not to say, like, 8 or 16-bit wasn't real music, but that that's different, you know? That's, you're making that on, like, for a game, on the game. But, like, we've got full orchestras playing this shit now. Like, the, all of it's real music. And any, like, elitist... That's like, oh, video game music is subpar mm -hmm. and it'll never be, it'll never be up to the, the beauty that is Beethoven. Like, fuck off, dude. It's, it, it ah. sorry. I have to deal with music elitists a lot. Yeah. Mainly. I, here, I found the link. Well, the links I sent should have been fine. That should be the entire album. Yeah, they're, the, those are the right links. Um, my, the one that I'm listening to right now, and it's also, I, I'm going to listen to this and, and like cry later. Um, it's heart shaped tears. God, if you don't know what this game is and like you haven't got there, when you get to these kind of moments, it, it hits. It's very like undertale outer wilds, probably tunic where it just puts you in a fucking moment. Oh man. Cause shit happens in this game. It's, it's an RPG yeah but it's got it's got beautiful piano but no i think you it's an hour and 12 long like fucking ost hour and 13 misha as a music lover and also you do this kind of stuff i was rickrolled what that, that's fine i did not rickroll anybody no no no. it's not the rickroll i clicked on it uh you heard well i guess you heard an ad playing but it's not the rickroll but yeah so i i i <laughs> I would say listen to all of it, but uh, obviously at some points they just, I don't know, maybe if you get bored, but it, it, it's good. Yeah. It's crazy that's a video game soundtrack. Yeah, there's, like I said, man, video game soundtracks have gotten, you know, some of my favorite music is video game soundtracks. Like, there's a couple of songs from that's Tunic I listen to on repeat. Sea of Thieves has a stellar soundtrack that i go back to countless times i'm gonna um, as, as chat was saying toby fox is my like mo like a, a very good modern composer and i have to say i mean that's how he got noticed uh yeah that's so crazy to think about wasn't it homestuck or whatever he worked on and that like made him famous uh yes i mean undertale is really what did it but like yeah he worked well, on I like, mean, homestuck uh he worked on like he worked on earthbound mods which is actually where megalovania is from oh wow um the like an early version of megalovania or it's either earthbound then homestuck then undertale or under or uh undertale came uh, last yeah yeah sorry uh <laughs> what the fuck uh homestuck or homestuck earthbound undertale yeah yeah um but yeah, but yeah. did homestuck but that I was like when toby fox got noticed Obviously, he took that and then he made fucking Undertale his own entire thing, <laughs> which is crazy. And um, I actually just saw uh, like either a YouTube short or TikTok from that pirate software guy, and he's like, it, people are like, you know, well, I don't, I don't, I'm not gonna try and create a video game because I can't program well. And he just goes, Undertale, one of the most critically acclaimed 
solely made you know like he made the game himself basically um indie games of all time uh cult classic critically acclaimed as well like just fucking he all these like you know things you can say about it right yeah um he's like that game is one of the most worst coded pieces of <laughs> shit ever he's like you don't know you don't see it because uh gamers and everything you're never you never see it yeah no you'll never see it but on the back end if you're looking at the code he's like you will enter a room and the the room will have a hundred cases and it'll check all those hundred cases just for after running all those hundred cases it'll set in the integer to zero after that and then check it one more time yeah <laughs> just to he's be like <laughs> and it just makes no fucking sense that it's doing all of this work but as a game as a gamer and with current processing doesn't slow the game down and you don't notice it as a gamer so yeah. you don't know it's coded terribly just from a, a programmer's perspective it's coded terribly so he's like don't worry about shitty like or not being able to program well focus on just building a game and telling a story yeah or not or not even telling a story you can yeah. just make a fun hack and slash game or god how many people fucked with the what was the 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 beat em up buddy like flash game you know what i'm talking about no also bye pip have a good night well, good night, Pip. I, I, we gotta be tightening this up. I gotta go to bed here. Yeah, I, I gotta get off too. Like log off, but, not like just shut up. Um, Disco Elysium. Night in the Woods does have a good soundtrack. That is another game to go back to with a nice. That's uh, what I've heard. A nice. You haven't played it? No. Um, it I mean, seems like also... a game you have to be in a good headspace to play. <laughs> um, I'm I'm one of those that. I like playing sad and dark or hurtful things when I'm feeling because it allows me to project my own feelings, I guess is kind of how I do it. But I, I will say, I mean, I, I don't know about necessarily headspace. It's not like dark, dark or like upsetting. It's just sometimes it's really relatable. Yeah. Like it's, uh, I mean, the premise of May is a college dropout feels like you're, you know, like the tires are spinning in mud and, and you're not going anywhere. So a lot of the, the subject matter is that feeling inadequate or um, being stuck in the rut. You know, a lot of those things are very prominent in the game, which is a lo like relatable for a lot of us nowadays. Yeah, that's especially. So, I mean, it's definitely one of those things. Yeah. But what I would say, does it deal with, like, really dark, like, let's talk about, like, unaliving stuff. They, they do address little things like that, but, like, it's not, like, sadistic to a point or, like, beating you in the face with it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I would say stay or clear more of Disco Elysium than A Night in the Woods. Yeah, don't don't tell Pip. I don't I don't have any interest in Disco Elysium. <laughs> I uh I've been playing it. Well, I played it all the way to that point, and I haven't streamed in like two weeks. Um, it's not bad. It's just goddamn, it's a lot of dialogue. I don't think it's a good stream game. Oh yeah. Um, like I kind of I might finish it by myself, but just to see what happens. But yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, and actually, now that I'm thinking about it, like I'm gonna go listen to some sad songs after this because I remembered a bunch of sad songs from like Outer Wilds and Undertale, and now. Oh fucking boy. lunar <laughs> now i'm gonna go to sleep all right it helps uh, me feel misha no that's good sometimes i listen I to can, sad songs to feel too don't worry i can do it in my bedroom alone where you can't see the tears <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a pizza tower what the fuck there's no way pizza tower has a stellar soundtrack that's another thing. The craziest <laughs> named games have the cr like the best soundtracks. I think if listen to Happy Song Sauce, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm going to bed. I don't care. I don't care if I cry and then go to sleep. Yeah, we 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 do gotta wrap. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Yeah. Well, I everybody, I talked a lot and was sad and stuff, and this is not an emo punk band, so I'm sorry. You're good. <laughs> You're all good. Everything's okay.
It does you're, help. You're allowed. Talk. You're allowed to talk about your feelings. You're allowed to have those feelings. And it does we're all here help for you. to talk about it. Yeah. Oh so. god, people are saying Pizza Towers OST slaps. Jesus. Ori in the Blind Forest has the craziest. Yeah, that's another good soundtrack. Okay, we gotta wrap up. Oh yeah, look, Pizza Tower full soundtrack. It's three hours long. <laughs> There's no way a game called Pizza Tower has three hours worth of. By the way, I've seen. What the hell is um, Pizza Tower? Oh my god, the opening is very energetic, and it's got a sick bass line. Whoa. Chat, what the We're fuck is this? There's no way this has... What the fuck am I looking at? It's the, the start's good. I'm just looking at screenshots. Oh, it's like a platformer? That's not yeah. what I expected when I heard Pizza Tower. Okay, well, we gotta wrap up. Alright, thanks for tuning in, everybody. I hope you have a good night. Hope you have a good weekend. Good what? Good night, everybody! No, yeah. it's actually surprisingly good. I skipped through a bunch of it. Oh, damn. I'll, I'll have to take a look at it. Yeah. But yeah. Oh. Also, Zeta like joined. I don't know at some point in time. I would say, "Oh, David Kite, thank you for dropping on in." I usually say thank you to everybody who comes in, and there's a couple names I don't think I said out loud. Oh yeah. Trying to be better. But yes. Have a good night. We'll catch you Yay. next week. All right. Bye, everybody. Bark, 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 bark. Bark, bark, bark. Fucking Ruby, where is she? Who knows? Uh, Find out next.